Hi, my name is Diane Hamilton of Revitalize Coaching Systems. They call me the Revitalizer. I was just on the Mella D. Hall show. This is her first show. I'm the first guest and the topic was moving forward to greatness. Oh my God. So, so many nuggets was dropped. It was all I can say to you, because I can tell you the whole show right now, but I can tell you this, if you don't do nothing else, watch it. And guess what? Call up some people, text some people, put it on Facebook. Don't forget, we have to be able to support one another, but not only that, we also need to be able to be free. And this is gonna help so many people. But if you don't tell nobody, no one is gonna know. So we are uh, looking forward to you. Please watch the show, the Melody Hall show. I was the first guest, honored, honored to be the first guest. Moving forward to greatness. Just the title make me hurry up and turn the TV on or watch it on YouTube. Tell a friend, text, email, use your resources. Um, not really much more to say is I can tell everything, but I can tell you this now. Also, make sure you hashtag the Melody Hall Show hashtag moving forward to greatness hashtag the revitalizer and also hashtag no more boxes no more lines thank you looking forward to hearing your reviews and what you think about the segment hello everyone welcome to the premiere episode of the mel d hall show a faith-based show where our goal is to inspire educate and entertain. I'm so excited for our premiere episode. Today, we have the Revitalizer, life coach Diane Hamilton, who's gonna teach us how to move forward to greatness. Stay tuned. And thank you so much for coming on the premiere episode of the Mel D. Hall Show. How are you today? I'm great. I'm excited. I'm oh, great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So for those of you all who don't know, um, I actually met Mrs. Hamilton, Diane. What would you prefer? Diane is fine. Okay, wonderful. So I actually met her at her No More Boxes, No More Lines event, which was a few weeks ago. I really, I wasn't even supposed to be there. I said I wasn't going. Wow. I got it. I got the um, invitation of maybe a day or two before from my girlfriend. And I'm so happy I did. It was absolutely life changing. It was definitely an experience. And one thing about you, um, compared to some other motivational speakers that I went through, went to, um, you came off as real, you know, your story is real. The things that you went through, um, dealing with, if you don't mind, I talk a little bit of, well, sure, please do. you know, some of the issues you have with your mom, you know, I know you spoke a little bit about drugs, things like that. I don't want to give it all away, but you know, you've had quite a life. That is stuff that people go through all the time. Um, bad relationships, things of that sort, and they can't overcome it. And that's what this episode is about, moving forward to greatness. And it's just so important to have you here so people can say, oh man, I don't have to stay stuck. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I don't have to stay stuck. I don't, I don't, just because, you know, my mom might have left me or, you know, I might be doing drugs my whole life. I don't have to stay there. And to see you there you know just standing in all your glory just giving your testimony you know it was just amazing 
And if you could just tell people maybe just a tad bit about you, um, a tad bit about the No More Boxes, No More Lines experience, okay? I know you're going to do it again soon, and we'll definitely have some details on that. So just just tell us. Tell us. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. Just tell us. Okay. Um, I'm originally from New York City, born and raised in the Bronx. Okay. I love to tell my story, and it is to help someone else know that they, they're not alone. And that might sound a little cliche, Absolutely. but when you actually know when you're in a room with someone that's been through some of the things that you might have been through, you start saying, okay, I can do this because they, they, they're they doing it. So being an example, that's how I look at it. Exactly. Um, at five years old, I was molested. Right. And that, 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 when I went through that, that was something that dictated my steps. It took your innocence at a point. At five years old, it yeah. took my innocence. Yes. I didn't want to have anything to do with that little girl. Oh, man. I left her. You knew at five? Not at five, but as I got older. Okay. When I realized that I had something was missing, wow. when I was going through these different things with friendships, with relationships, with dr drugs, and when I got to the point that it was time to do something different, I had to go back and revisit all of that. And mm -hmm. that's when I realized that this all took place because when I was five years old, I was actually stuck and missing wow. that piece of me. I remember I had a conversation with someone and I said, I might have been, I don't know, 40, 30, I was maybe in my late 30s, and I said, you know, I'm um, just, let's say 35. I'm 35, but I feel like I'm 18. And that was because <laughs> there was okay. a part of me that was missing. Really? Yes, because okay. I wasn't, I was yearning for the parts of me and experiences that I didn't get a chance to have. And I thought about why am I continuing on with the same relationships, going through the same things with friendships? Why? With the drugs? Before I moved to North Carolina, way before that, I was able to leave that behind. Thank That's God wonderful. I was able to get past that. That, and let me tell you something. I congratulate you because Thank it's you. a lot of people who can't do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, it was a thing where I wanted to give my kids and myself something better. Absolutely. And it came to a point where with that, God, I, I choose to call him God, I don't want to offend anybody, but it's a higher okay. power or something that's greater than me came and let me know that if you don't get yourself together, your children are going to be taken away from you. Not that I wow. was living that type of a life, but it was just something that was said to me so that I had to make sure that I took care of that. But I kept going down the same road with relationships and friendships and, and where was all this coming from? Why did I, why was I continuing on to do the same mm -hmm. thing over and over and over again? So it got to a point where I was tired. Absolutely. I was tired and I knew it was more to me. Absolutely. So I started doing the work. I started thinking back like, where, where's all this coming from? Why, why am I like this? Why is this void missing? Mm -hmm. So I had to go way back when I was five years old. You know, a lot of times we don't think that these things have a big impact on what we're doing, the reason why we're doing what they do. So as I went back and I had to do that work of forgiving and just swallowing some bad pills. And yes. Just, um, yes. Just sometime when I look over my life now, I, don't, I look at it differently. I don't look at my life in a way as, oh my God, me, but why not me? Absolutely. So I feel like my life was an example so that the things that I went through was to help somebody else, to let them know you can get over it too. Just looking for pe looking to be loved, like I said, by friends. So all of this stems from when I was five years old. So you said that um, no one ever checked on you, no one ever said you okay. You know, that definitely was a traumatic experience, um, especially coming from your mom. And I know it's a lot of people, you know, who've had issues with family members things of that sort. How? And you said you were able to forgive your mom. He showed me a mirror one day. What? He showed me a mirror one day. He showed you a mirror? He showed me a mirror. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, not really a mirror. Okay. But just let's use our imagination. Right. And 
he put the mirror up and like I said I had thought with drugs and different things like that so he put the mirror up and I'm looking in the mirror and of course I'm expecting to see myself right I saw my mother huh so I picked it up again and I saw her again I was like wait a minute so somebody stop somebody playing tricks she did alcohol mm -hmm. and I did drugs you see society accepts alcohol even though we have alcoholics we have AA and different things but because it's legal right it's looked better a little bit different right he showed me that it wasn't no different because they're both drugs mm. so it was like a ha, a ha ha moment for me okay that did, so it brought it all together I went through something traumatic in my life that made me do the things that I did yes something happened to my mother I don't know, and I don't even know till today, but I know something happened to her to make her make the decisions that she made. Yeah, absolutely. So I was able to forgive her because I was no different than her. I got a chance to be free. I got a chance to forgive and experience that. She did not. Absolutely. So today, I stand here, sitting here, for just not me, but for her too. Absolutely. For her freedom as well. So... That's how I was able to forgive her, because I had to see me in her. Absolutely. You know. That's that's amazing. Yes. I mean, that's that's really big of you. I know um, some people watching this might have issues with their family um, now that they can't, you know, kind of get through. And um, you know, one thing about having a grudge or not forgiving people, things like that, it really does hinder you. Yes. So that's amazing. That's really amazing. I mean, really. So, okay, so you came to North Carolina from New York, okay? And um, I guess to say, like, okay, was it coming from New York to North Carolina that you figured out, oh, I'm great? You know, the title of the show is this, you know, moving forward to greatness. Was that the beginning for you, this move, or what, and also what, what inside you, what made you say, you know what, I'm great. There's something more for me out there. What, tell me about that. It wasn't when I came. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't when I moved. Okay. Because my focus was on my two children. I wanted to give them a better life so they could be great. Okay. I still had the issues. I still was going through. I moved to North Carolina when I was 32 years old. Oh, wow. Okay. And my two boys were nine and five. So that was more of my focus. It really wasn't for me when I moved here, but God had a different plan for me. All right. He knew that bringing me out from where I was, he had to, I had to go through what I went through, and I had to go through all experiences, even here. Hmm. But I realized that I was great when I was able to forgive because I was able to see truly who I was. I was able to see greatness beyond hmm. all of the scars. So, I'm sorry, Petra. So you had to forgive in order to see the greatness in yourself? Yes. It's like an anchor on your leg. Absolutely. And you're underwater. You can't hmm. breathe, you can't move, you're stuck. Hmm. So when that was released from me, I was able to see my world differently. Right with new eyes, with a new beginning. So I feel like I had a clean slate, a piece of, a, a clean slate. When I look at my life today, I look at it as one side of it has a whole bunch of stuff going on. <laughs> okay. And when I said yes to God and I was able to see myself great, he turned the canvas around and now the canvas is blank. And I actually can see God Absolutely. designing my life. As I speak to him, and we have our conversations, I'm writing in my journal, he answers me, and I get to watch my life play out mm. in the greatness. Mm. 